This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and it's nice to be back after my shoulder surgery. I occasionally get comments such as, are you sure the coaxial cable works the way you mentioned? Or something like, how is it possible for a shorted or open piece of coax to look like 50 ohms when an RF signal is initially applied? This video is about what's going on inside a transmission line via an experiment you can do with limited test equipment at home. In video number 11, which was titled Creation of SWR, I showed the internal workings in a piece of transmission line via the simulation program LT SPICE. But often a real experiment is a better way to understand a topic. Hopefully you will find this interesting and informative. The block diagram of the circuit we're going to use for the experiment is shown here, and it consists of an RF signal generator and it does not need to be very much power at all, just enough power that an SWR detector can detect the forward and reflected uh, power. And we need to be able to turn this signal generator off and on quickly, so we need some kind of a pulse generator to do that, and we need an oscilloscope. In addition, we need a long enough piece of coaxial cable that we're capable of seeing the forward reflected signals um, being uh, separate in time. And that's all we need. The test circuit I used on top is a uh, cheapy function generator that generates the one microsecond pulse. And down below it is an 8640B signal generator. And the function generator drives the 8640, and the 8640 is in a mode where it's in its pulse. And pulse means basically that the signal can be gated on and off like a CWA form. And that drives an SWR bridge that I've shown before in various videos. And the top right port is the input from the signal generator. The top left port is the output to the antenna. The bottom left port is the forward power. The bottom right port is the reflected power. And that's all there was to it to the experiment. And of course, those two signals go up to a scope. In the experiment here, what is shown is the yellow trace is the gated oscillator. And if I stop that for a moment, there we can see the 10 megahertz signal, 10 or so uh, cycles of it, gated by the one microsecond blue trace. The signal generator that I used uh, to gate the um, output has a slight delay. And that slight delay Slight, the slight delay is somewhere around 250 uh, nanoseconds before the signal starts. It ramps up, but it ramps up fairly quickly, and then it ramps down uh, fairly quickly at the end. Again, at the end, it's uh, a little bit longer than a 250 mi uh, nanosecond delay at the end. But anyways, that's the signal that I'm going to use. And if we put that into the SWR bridge and change the trigger to be an external signal. Anyway, so what I've got here is the signal generator is going into the SWR bridge. The output of the SWR bridge at the moment is a dummy load. And the yellow trace will be the forward power from the SWR bridge. And the blue trace will be the Uh, reflected power. Okay, both set to the same scale. And let me open up the output from the SWR bridge and we'll see both both the forward uh, power, which is the yellow one, and the uh, blue, which is the reflected power. Now, if we look at those two on top of each other, You see they're pretty much pretty much the same size, but they uh, actually are out of phase. That's just the way my SWR bridge works on a cycle by cycle basis. But that's the forward inflected power, and both of those are of the same of the same magnitude. And again, I'll put this put this back down to where it belongs below here. And what we see is. The SWR bridge responds very, very quickly, and we can calculate the SWR and the um, 
scope shows the, the peak to peak voltage for the forward and the reverse directions to be identical, which means the SWR is basically infinity. We could put a 100 ohm load on the output of the SWR bridge, which should be a 2 to 1. And now we see the um, forward being about 109 millivolts and reflected being 38 millivolts. It should be one third of that amplitude for a 2 to 1 SWR. We can put a 3 to 1 uh, SWR being 150 ohms out there. Now it should be about half. And we see 50, uh, 57 or 58 millivolts versus 109 millivolts. Pretty close to, pretty close to half. And now let's put a piece of transmission line out there. The piece of transmission line, as I indicated before, was 157 feet. And it had a delay of about 480 nanoseconds. And this piece of transmission line is open circuit. So now what we see is a big delay in the reverse, or in the reflected signal. That big delay in the reflected signal is 480 nanoseconds. 480 nanoseconds is the round tip delay on our piece of transmission line. So, interestingly enough, if we look at the area between the two cursors, what we see is we see a forward, forward signal and no reflected power at all. So that would mean that the transmitter would see a 1 to 1 SWR for 480 nanoseconds. After 480 nanoseconds, we see the reflected power and the uh, forward power uh, both present at the same time. And the ratio of the two of those is the peak on the uh, reflected power is 91 millivolts, and on the forward power it's 100 and 107 millivolts or so. If we divide those out, we can, we can calculate what the SWR is. And that basically, uh, or we can do that as return loss, and that should be the um, twice the um, loss of the transmission line. And I will do that calculation here um, and put it on the screen. So what we see here is very clearly, for a period of time, even though the output of the transmission line is open, um, the transmitter sees a 50 ohm load. Now we could short the output of the transmission line if we wanted to, and it will show the same thing uh, as it open does. It really doesn't matter. But this experiment's pretty easy to do. It works, um, you know, it, it, it's the way the transmission line works. But the people who have questioned this um, and asking me how could the uh, a transmission line is that is shorted actually end up um, looking like 50 ohms? And the answer is it doesn't, but it does for a period of time. And that period of time is a reflected wave that goes down and has to come back before things become stabilized. So I hope this uh, little experiment has been interesting. Uh, it isn't very difficult to do. And for those of you who think that the experiment I just did is a little bit too complicated for you to do, to do yourself at home, let me uh, give you a couple op other options to do the experiment. Here's a LT Spice file showing a signal generator, which is a continuous signal generator. And it generates a 5 volt peak signal, which is indicative of, you know, le less than a watt. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a small resistor in series with it here. And we're going to use a, a MOSFET, which has a fairly low gate charge and low capacitance. So we can turn it off and on very quickly at RF. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off and on with a with a pulse generator. So you need a pulse generator or any, um, a 555 timer circuit will do it. And what we're what we'll see here is that here's the pulse generator, uh, five volt pulse generator I built, and we see the effect of the capacitance here on the gate, and that capacitance could be mitigated by reducing this resistor, of course. But what we see on the output here is very interesting. We see a pretty good signal that we can turn on and off. It has a little bit of overshoot and a little bit of undershoot here, but it's pretty good. And if we look at this circuit looking back as far as what the reflected wave is going to see, here's the, here's the output termination. But a signal looking back this way would see 43 ohms plus 15 ohms or 58 ohms when this circuit is open. Well, it's actually 100 in parallel with 15, which is 13 ohms. 13 and in series with 43 is 56, or when this is when this is uh, shorted out, it sees 43 ohms. So either, either sees 43 or like 57 ohms. Both of those are fairly fairly low SWRs, and this signal 
could uh, be used as the driving signal very easily in this experiment. Also, if you think that my SWR bridge is too difficult to build, you could build a resistive SWR bridge. Now, a resistive SWR bridge looks like three resistors, and in, and in a 50 ohm circuit, we have a 50 ohm resistor, a 50 ohm resistor, and that gives us a reference point, another 50 ohm resistor, and then our load. Now, if our load is 50 ohms, this reference point and this reference point are equal, so we we see no voltage across R4. R4 simulates your scope. So what you would do is you would put uh, channel one of your scope here and channel two of your scope here, and you set your scope to do a subtraction between the two channels. So when we see a voltage across R4 that's very low, we know we have a low SWR or SWR of one to one. And as this voltage rises, what we see is we see the, an increase in SWR. Now we do not need in this circuit to know that the reflected signal occurs at a different time than the, than the forward signal. What we know from this circuit is what the SWR, the SWR is. So if we go back and look at what we had before, for that first period of time until the reflected wave came back, we, this little bridge circuit here would show a low SWR, and then it would show an SWR that was higher due to what the uh, return loss in the transmission line was. So this circuit is super easy to build. Um, it doesn't require any power resistors at all. These are, can all be, you know, fractional watt resistors and a scope. Now you do need a way to trigger your scope still to, to know what you what you have, but um, that makes uh, makes the requirements for the equipment a lot less. While I'm doing that, um, let's just change this this resistance here to 50 ohms. Just watch watch how this works. So if we look at the trace net one and net one is the same as let's change the color of net one of net one here to be something oh i don't know let's make it uh, some kind of bright green color so here's net one and it shows zero it shows zero volts here now as we go to a two to one swr we see net one showing a voltage of 1.08 volts. Now the pink the pink trace here, which is the SWR at the load, it shows two to one like it should, and the SWR at the transmitter end is 1.167. So this bridge does not transfer the SWR that you see at the load through to the transmitter, but it can measure it. So here we have 1.08 volts being a two to one SWR. Now, if we go to 100 ohms, we won't get 1.08 volts again. It'll be close, but it won't be the same. It's a little bit higher. We see 1.28, and that's not really important. What's important is that in a, res in a resistive bridge like this, that we can that we can use it to calculate when the um, circuit is matched. A lot of the QRP guys use a circuit like this and then switch it out. It's part of an internal, um, like a small tuner they might have. Um, while we're at it here, let me just mention a couple other little tidbits. Uh, I plotted this by just saying plot uh, and I named it net and it was the magnitude of the voltage across R4. I can also do it if I want to be a little bit um, want a little more emphasis on this trace I can say stroke 4. I did it by saying RMS. You can put stroke up here too. It doesn't matter. These are all features of SimSmith that are really nice. I can say stroke four, so it's a, it's a stroke of uh, width of four. I can come down here and say, um, if I want that to be da a dashed line, it'll be on for 10 dots, off for five dots, on for 10, off for five. I can make the stroke width, you know, anything I want it, want it to be. Uh, very powerful and very cool to say the least. And I'm using a version of Sim, Sim Smith, which is, I believe, will be the next released version. Um, but it, but these features are available in the, in the current version, too. Anyways, um, this is another way to do the experiment. Hopefully, this has been interesting. Um, I kind of find these experiments more useful to me to understand things than I do by just... Uh, doing a simulation program. But the best the best of both worlds is when the simulation program agrees with what you actually measure. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you have, give me a likes, a like, thumbs up, uh, you know, whatever. And uh, appreciate as usual you uh, watching the videos.